Hi, I'm Mary LaCourcier, and I'm here in downtown Nantucket. Whether you've arrived here by boat, bus, or plane, once you set foot on the island, you know you've landed in a unique and special place. This is a place where the past and the present live in harmony with each other, and that is why so many people come to visit and others come to stay. Today we're going to talk with Kathleen Hay, who is an interior designer, and she's going to show us a few of the spots on the island where you can find some incredible, unique, and amazing antiques. This year's theme for the Nantucket by Design event to benefit the Nantucket Historical Association happens to be renewal. So bringing an antique piece in, antique objects, truly give a sense of place, a sense of culture, and are the ultimate green object. Hi, I'm Kathleen Hay. I'm a Nantucket-based interior designer. Shopping today, the town of Nantucket, and specifically the marvelous antique stores we have. I am here at 15 Main Street, home of Sylvia Antiques and Four Winds Craft Guild, located in the historic Pacific Club building. And I am with Wayne St. John, who is an incredible antique uh, historian and dealer. Um, and we're going to talk about a few marvelous items they have here at the store. Thank you, Kathleen. Sylvia Antiques opened in 1927 here in Nantucket, and this is our 94th year. Third generation, owned and operated by the same family, and I'm lucky to be associated with this organization. I'm really intrigued by this pair of uh, glass globes. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yes, Kathleen. These, these globes would have been show globes from a 19th century pharmacy or apothecary in England or France, the United States. This glass globe sits on, on a turned wooden base and the globe would have been filled with colored water to stimulate sales. They would have been used in the sales area of the pharmacy. Sort of draw the eye in. And yes. I think they're just incredible in um, in their sort of modern appearance, even though they're antiques. I could imagine them sitting on a sideboard as you have them here in the store, but I would also love to see them on pedestals on a in pair front of, of pedestals. the window. In fact, they were on a pair of built-in modernist cabinets in the house that they came from. That they came from. Well, that makes sense to me. Yes. And I think having them in front of a window would really play on the um, transparent aspect of them. Yes. Um, I think they're just incredible. They could also sit on the floor under a console in an entry and be an intriguing object. They're quite large. They're about 20 inches tall and um, 16 inches in diameter. Yeah, they really are. They're marvelous. So we've now come up to the second floor of Sylvia Antiques. And there are two rooms plus the stairwell filled with beautiful items. Um, I was particularly intrigued by this trade sign. Um, obviously, it's a nod to the nautical, but it's, it's bold size and the, the old light bulb sockets I find just marvelous. And it gives a sense of age to an interior. It's really an interesting sign because it is sculptural and the electrical parts of it have been left intact, so it gives it texture. It came from a great collection here on the island, and it does sort of feel back to old Cape Cod, old islands. Um, it probably was a trade sign from a, um, an inn or a restaurant um, here oh, along the waterfront. That makes sense. And I, I do think the fact that the old wires and sockets are more left intact is what gives it its, um, its interest and that sort of sculptural quality. We are now in the second room upstairs at Sylvia Antiques and I was intrigued by this beautiful piece of shell work. It's reminiscent of a sailor's valentine but not in the same shape one typically finds. It is. This is the type of work that was done in England in the 19th century, um, primarily Victorian. And it was done on a, a series of wires and done in a shadow box form rather than being glued to the back of the, the case where Sailor's Valentines were. So it gives it more of a three-dimensional um, effect. And that's what I love about it, that it does have dimension. And I think the green background makes it intriguing, especially given that the, the design is flowers. So Wayne, I was really intrigued by her. Obviously, 
she's a woman, so that's wonderful. Um, I love the action in her form. Um, tell me where she would have lived back it, in the it's day. It's the type of carving that um, ship owners would have put on their ships to represent somebody that they loved um, and somebody who represented them. Um, it probably came from the side facing forward or flanked along with another one, a pair on the stern board, on the stern of a ship. Oh, fantastic. I never knew the sterns would be so beautifully decorated. Yeah, sometimes we they all had see great, the figureheads. Yeah, the bows. big banners sometimes and eagles. Beautiful. Um, I just and, love her. And the color, of course, is, is amazing. I think she'd be great in an entry hall kind of announcing. And, um, and maybe... A, Heading up a stairway. Up a stair, yeah. She's just marvelous. So I am personally a collector of Staffordshire dogs, but all of mine are the more typical white, black and white variety, much smaller. These are fantastic. I mean, just their size and scale alone, um, their sort of bold graphic quality, and then their color. Yes. These are interesting because they're a um, like a chalkware, um, different than the ceramic with the high glaze on them. These are more like a painted chalkware. What uh, year would they have been? Still in that same Staffordshire era? I Again, I would put them to the Victorian Tim period, period um, yeah. 1880. They're just, they're again, marvelous. They would be fantastic on the back of a, uh, on top of a console, the, behind a sofa, on an entry table, in a dining room. I, I think they'd even be fun as centerpiece. A, a very quintessential Nantucket item, a ship diorama, but what I love about this one is the trapezoidal shape and the fact that it's a little more primitive. It is primitive and it, it's a very unusual shape, um, both in that it tapers toward the top, it also narrows toward the top in its depth. And this painted seaweed, it's very folky. We sell a lot of dioramas and they go into all kinds of environments both contemporary and traditional nautical, um, but they stand on their own as a, a painting would. They do, and this one just and caught they, my eye with, and even the color, the red with more of a, a seaweed green versus the blue that you typically see behind the ships. Right, the color right. The different, different artists used what they had, yeah. um, and some of the paints age differently, um, and this one turned this nice sort of greeny color. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today, Wayne. You're welcome. It's been fun. Nantucket has always been a treasure trove of wonderful shops, specifically antique stores. I love to use antiques in my work because they give a provenance to a house. So many of the homes on Nantucket these days are brand new builds, and they don't have a sense of history yet. So we are at the John Rugg shop, um, located at 5 India Street with shopkeeper Francis Farrell. This is one of my favorite shops for many, many years, um, originally owned by John Rugg, and Francis took over ownership in? 2000. 2000. Tell me about this chair. Caught my eye immediately when I walked in the door. Well, wicker is uh, something uh, common for Nantucket, and I loved it because it was brown, and. Um, as we were discussing earlier, uh, it fits my criteria for having a chair, which is it's comfortable and it's structurally really sound. Fantastic. And I love the braid. The braid is beautiful. The braid is beautiful. I love the way the cushion was done, and this would work in even a contemporary home. So, Francis, tell me about this mirror. This really caught my eye. Obviously, it lends a sense of place to Nantucket, being sailing ships, but this is Jack Tar. He's an allegorical figure to British naval history. Uh, I, he might be more like John Wayne in the United States to cowboys, but Jack Tar is to naval history and uh, it obviously has a lot of relation to Nantucket and very decorative and just yes. great colors and the loved colors it. colors are fantastic and even down to the stone steps. I think it gives, as I was saying, a sense of place for a Nantucket home without being so hokey and predictable. 
uh, another sense of place, this uh, model, which is a, a bait boat that's now I'm repurposing to sell here as a as a, uh, a, a planter for a table or an entry table. I mean, it's it's the real thing, and it's just uh, beautiful. It it really caught my eye because I love sculptural items in a home. I feel like homes need that sense of dimension. And I love the scale of it, the color. And then when you told me it was a bait boat, it really just gave it even that sense of history. These would be set out on a pond or a lake and you'd bait it. And when the ship boat started moving, you knew you had a hit. Yeah. Otherwise you could sit there and read the paper or. I just think <laughs> it's, it's, it's marvelous. It's a bobber just... in, in its biggest form. I adore these toll flowers, and I love that you have a pair because as we know, as things come down through history, it's very difficult to find pairs. Tell me about these. Well, at this toll where is, uh, they're all painted as real flowers in and of itself is a rarity. Most of them are just gold leafed if you see them. It came from a church in Venice, oh. uh, 19th century. And when you think about it today, we have 1-800 flowers, but back then there were no flowers in the middle of winter and these were really an important feature of the church. and. Uh, this whole backdrop here that may not be able to see so well is, is glass and with pillars here. This was the, the barber's shop where Eye of the Needle is now, and here's where the barber chairs went. And these two uh, uh, flower uh, uh, displays fit in there well, and I've kept them there. I've never sold them. They're just, they've just They're been there. They're fantastic. And he's next to Abe, which I is mean... absolutely unrelated in no way, but I thought that's a good place to put But I up. love that mix of Italian meets America, and I think, again, both of these have a sculptural quality that I think is very important in a home to give it dimension. I was at Brimfield in May, the abbreviated show, and I'm walking along the field, and this dealer brings this out of his van, and I look at it, and I say, what's that? And he says, it's just bad art. I don't know anything about it. I said, I'll take it. He's Ken, and he's, he's, a, he's a curious kind of a guy. I, I saw it as sort of a cross between Warhol and Gerhard Rector. Thank you, Kathleen. Those are just a few of the many places here on the island that you can find antiques and vintage finds. So whether your style is Sea Captain Chic or Early Grandma, there's something here for you. I, for one, have my eye on that electric anchor. So um, thank you today for joining us, and we hope that you enjoy your adventures as you roam the island looking for one-of-a-kind pieces, and you never know what you'll find.